Hello, this is Arthur Nix with EWKS. And today I want to go over some uh, things that I do when I'm estimating. And I know some people don't get to see these tricks and, and settings and, and that you can do inside heavy bid, uh, specifically in the tree view. That's what I want to focus on today. So, so here I am in the tree view. You notice up here at the top we have this roll down menu. And now I can just double click and it rolls back up. I can see it. But if I need to, it is kind of nice sometimes when I'm, you know, doing other things besides the tree view to just have this roll down. So all you got to do is just double click it and it'll roll back up. Um, also, uh, I always in my heavy bid set the display options so that I can see the uh, activity stick out differently from the bid items. So here you can see that I have the text as blue and I also have it italicized. Very easy to set up. I just go to display options. I go to activity. You can see here that I named, I just go new. I just called it activity. This is just really for you, this description. I italicized it and then I just put the text on there. Um, so it is very easy to do. Uh, I would, I would recommend not using too much of the highlight here. You notice I can also, for instance, I can come back to the bid item and I can make, um, you know, things like subtotals highlighted or uh, headers highlighted and, uh, you know, which is okay if you don't have too many of them. You just don't want to turn this on the left hand side into a Christmas tree and it's kind of distracting. The good thing is this is user specific. So whatever you do here is not going to, you know, no one else is going to see it. Uh, but I would recommend if you like it, show it to others in your estimating team. And if they like it, you could take a screenshot of it and they can set this up. So that way, uh, you know, it's easy to, to uh, you know, take advantage of some of these things here, this uh, settings. So that's the bid item and then the activity. And again, like I said, it allows me to see this more clearly over here. Another thing that people don't realize is you can search on description. So if you have a very long estimate, you can find bid items. I right click and uh, do a search. It was at the very bottom, right click search. I can uh, also do alternate S. If I'm over here, it should be the alternate S key and well, let's bring it up to top uh, there. So I find bid items and I'm looking for RC and it'll bring up all the bid items under RC or if I want to go to activities, there's the activities and there's the RC activities. Uh, so that way, you know, you're not scrolling up and down looking for things on the left hand side. You could just do a search. Another thing I like is the filters here. So display options is just going to be changing to display where filters will be actually filtering out. So you got to kind of think of a large estimate, 500 bid items, maybe like a, a big road let, you know, a big road job, bridge job, uh, where you have tons of items here on the left hand side. Of course, you can assign your initials to them, but I can also assign a summary value and just say, well, I want to see my sanitary sewer items and nothing else. There's my sanitary sewer. It collects them, puts them all together. Very easy to set up. You just go set up, bid items, type of, you know, I here I call, I, you can actually title this if you want to. You have up to six summary groups so that you can organize these things any way you want. And what's cool is you can make a subtotal with these things. So, you know, I come over here to subtotal and I go ahead and uh, make a new one and I'll just call this uh, sanitary sewer. I'm going to print this after, let's just say uh, 140. And instead of a bid item range, I can come in here and do a summary group. There's my sanitary sewer. Very easy to set up and there it is. Okay, so that way I don't have to do the range or, you know, I, it's just, I just tag it to what I've done here in summary groups. So, 
And, and this is cool because, like I said, when I'm working, I don't want to see a whole bunch of bid items. I just want to see what I'm working on. Also, if you're working in phases and you say, well, I want to see the water line in phase one and phase two and phase three all together, then I can do that because, the, you know, they'll be under the same summary group. They'll be all together. And then maybe I can compare them, uh, you know, and I'm looking to, uh, you know, make them similar production. So that's just, uh, you know, I love these filters. Uh, you know, you got your bid item filters. I can reset them here. You also have your activity filters. Uh, so take a look at using those. All right, let's look over on the right side here, some things that we can do on the right side. One thing I always tell people is in the note, if I have a, the note screen here uh, for the activity, this is the one most people use. And uh, you can now, and I forgot, you know, a couple years ago, you, you we uh, HCSS changed this so that you can go throw this onto another monitor. So this is more likely than if you have this open all the time, you can see here, I have it open, and I'm going to save it for that activity. It stays open, and I'm not opening and closing it, so I'm more likely to go and type in notes right here. Um, and these are very valuable to come back for review, to remind yourself. Later on, it goes on to the field, uh, so they can see what you know what you were thinking about, and uh, so this is huge if you have two monitors, uh, so that you can just leave this open and it syncs with the um, you know with the activity, and then you can always close it out too. Uh, it's a couple other things you can, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know that you can just come down here and type in the number of shifts or any of these fields right here, uh, the ones that are that are white, not the man hours, you can put in values and it will back into the whatever you put as a productivity right here. So, you know, if you like to round up shifts or you're doing the budget and you want to show even shifts, you can do that. Another thing that I like to show is the internal spreadsheet. I, I think this is a very overlooked uh, feature of heavy bid. Um, and, and you can just create, you don't have to use these down here that ship with, with uh, heavy bid. I just tell people, look, if you're going to do some kind of a calculation, instead of typing it out in the note, and you can do it. Let me go ahead and make this small. You can do it right here in the spreadsheet and, you know, just go ahead and, and type your calculation out. Let's say I want five and, you know, you could put in headers. This could be a square foot times length and I want, you know, I want volume. And then you just put it, you know, just it, from here on out, it's just like Excel. Okay. And so I'm going to go equal. So that way, instead of just typing it out, I have a calculation that I can always come back to. And then I can, this becomes the note, set note area. I could even save it as a custom calculator. Oh, I do have to name it. That's probably the, and I'll just call this calc. You don't have to really name it like anything fancy because it's going to save it with the activity uh, code. Okay, so whatever it is, it's going to have the activity code in front of it. So it's not critical. You notice I can save as a custom calculation if you like it. And then you'll see it. You can use it across, you know, you can use it for future estimates. So, and I can also link this value and I can map it to, you know, any field that you see is not grayed out. So I save it and then it comes in as a note right here. So. I think this is nice instead of typing out, you know, a, a lengthy note, you can just use that spreadsheet calculation. And I would encourage you to, you know, go ahead and set these up so that there's just simple things that you do day in, day out. Just set them up. And they're, of course, set up and set up spreadsheet calcs and assemblies. And the last thing I want to cover, of course, is the search capability. If you're in the activity or a resource, uh, don't go up and down looking for things. What I always suggest is when you're here and, uh, and you want to bring in a material, you go and do a search 
and it's system wide I'm not looking at the local material and let's say I'm looking for RCP there's my RCPs right there so I don't want to you know go up and down looking here pressing the plus sign I'm just gonna say look I want 24 inch RCP and at that point it's not in the estimate yet until I check that box and to check that box I just hit the space bar space bar removes I can go down and you know if there's other items that I want that are close by I can just hit the space bar like that so a uh, huge time saver you know instead of just searching through manually the uh, code book so be sure to use the search command when you're looking for anything you know um, labor equipment but mainly material is what what you're going to use that for or the activity so that kind of wraps it up just a few suggestions uh, in the tree view that I use a lot and uh, I would encourage you to take a look at these and, and making some changes in your workflow again this is Arthur Nix with EWKS and I hope you enjoyed this video